Hello guys, hello to everyone. Welcome back to another video lesson. I mean the last video lesson uh, before your matter. Today we will cover the worksheet number eight, round five, and the topic is about the digital computers. Instructor Muhammad Mustafa Bayat. Today we will study about the digital computers. In previous, we have studied about the analog computers, digital computers, and also hybrid computers. So, as you have learned about the digital computers, learn, let's learn more about digital computers. There are classified according to their computing capabilities, size, and application areas. It means if you want to divide or classify the computers, why we have different classification of computers, it's according to the capabilities, it means abilities, according to their sizes, how much size they have, and according to their application, which applications they can support. For example, your phone, which application can support? Your mobiles that you are connected to the Zoom, it can support which applications, and you are using the computers, these computers support which kind of applications. So we have divided the computers in four categories. The first category is about the microcomputers. As you say, micro. Micro is the smallest computers. Then we will discuss about the mini computers that they are bigger than micro computers. And the third is about the mainframe computers that they are exactly, we can say, fast computers than two others. And the best computers, very powerful computers, is about the super computers. Let's talk about the first option. It means microcomputers. Most of the times we see PC or personal computers. What does PC mean? It means personal computer. It's, it's my own computer. So why we call PC? Because uh, in one time, one user can use a computer. This is called a PC or microcomputer. A microcomputer is a computer built around a microprocessor has Intel Core i3 and Core i4. If you search the internet about the microprocessors as Intel, I mean the Intel is the company which creates the cores. So this cores, I mean Core i3, Core i2, Core i7, Core i5, these are called all in categories of microcomputers. So a microcomputer's complete CPU on a single microchip. Let's uh, use my web browser. It means image of a single micro chip. This processor, yeah, this is the chip. In a single microchip, we have the processors. It means we can use these microchips. These are chips. These are, it has some, it has, so we can say, hundreds or thousands of transistors in it. So they are very close together and they do the performance as CPU, it means central processing unit. And these microcomputers or personal computers like our laptops, they have microchips. What does it mean though these microchips do? Exactly, they are do our operations. When we right click, when we double click, when we click on any commands, they will perform our actions because they are controlled in it. They are capable of processing a small volumes of data. I mean, by the personal computers, 
just we can use small performance of data. Some images in here, for example, micro computers. So these are a little bit, in, in case of the image, about the microcomputers. For example, this is a little bit small, and these are the images for microcomputers. In microcomputers, you can see they, they have all a single processor and themselves. So these are the images like this. But uh, when we come to the categories, Categorization of the microcomputers. Microcomputers are divided in uh, desktops. As you can see, desktops, you have, this is a powerful desktop. So the first microcomputers is above the desktop. You can see we can write it number one. Example one is about what? About the desktops. In the category of microcomputers, it comes in category of microcomputers, and the first one is about the desktop. You have seen the desktop, you have the desktops in your homes, so you will use it. All the computers that typically sit on a desktop, this is called a desktop because we sit it on a disk, we put it on a disk, we uh, you can see arrange it on a disk. This is called a desktop. Another computer, or we can say number one. And example number two is about the laptops. For using the laptops, these laptops, or we can say portable computers. We say laptops or portable computers. Why we call, we are always saying this, portable computers or laptops are the vans which can be carried along by a user while you moving from one place to another. It's very simple. It means when you're moving from one place to another place, you can carry your laptops or your portable computers, but we can carry our desktop computers. It's so easy. I know all of you understand. And let's talk about the palm tops computers. Uh, you can see these palm tops computers uh, in previous versions. These uh, palm tops computers all small computers that can fit into your palm. I mean, you can just uh, like your mobile phones you have in your pocket. You can carry it because it's, it's called palm. Can fit in your palm. These computers combine it with phone functionalities. So this is called also known as smartphones. It means when we are come on Palm tops. These are the examples of palm tops because we can catch them or we can hold them in our palms. These are all the examples about the palms. And nowadays, these uh, palm computers exactly they are very professional and very have their more functionalities. For example, you can see these pictures are new and modern ones. But these pictures are a little bit, you can say, old ones. So these are the palm computers. I mean, you can hold it by your palm or by your hand. So another category of the computers, it's number, put it the number, the example of uh, microcomputers. And example number three, the category number three is about the palm. Yes, let's put divided, let's divide it. Okay. And uh, another top computers is about the tablets. You need category one, microcomputers. Example number four is about the tablets. Also, I know most of you are using the tablets right now with me. I mean, you're studying in Zoom with me right now and use your tablets. Tablets are more powerful than palm tops or smartphones. Yes, exactly. It looks like a laptop without the keyboard. I mean, also, it's a laptop. Most of the, uh, these computers use as SIM cards. I mean, we can call like a phone, and uh, they are like a P 
PC or computer, we can open our offices. We can write with them. We can use the internet very fast. So they are very fast than others. I mean, the panelists. It looks like a laptop without any keyboard. There are touch screens for input and output. Everything is touching here. I mean, we don't use any, we don't have any key. Another category that's about the mini computers. As I have told you that uh, mini computers are bigger than micro. Mini computers are bigger than micro computers. So they are bigger in size and also faster in processing speed. It means they have more chips. They have high speedy chips than microcomputers. Mini computers can support several users at the same time. If I write in here about the mini computers, maybe we find different. Yes, exactly. Most of the intelligent uh, devices or laptops that we are using or all of us are using, they are about the mini computers. Mini computers can support uh, two or more users. But uh, the first examples for mini computers also we can say in here in half is about HCL Magnum or HP 1000 series. Let's find this computer. Maybe we could find an internet name. I type the name and here put it, paste it. Uh, HCL Magnum, I think it's something different. It shows, I want to do the picture of computers. Well, write it, computer. Uh, well, this is the example in here, but most of these pictures are a little bit because this is the shortcut for HCL. I will hope in different image. Uh, let's uh, type another name, for example, HP 1000 series. Copy this. Maybe we find a good one in here. HP, not these HPs. So these are the pictures also for image. You can see these are old ones and these are the new ones, the microcomputers. And uh, microcomputers, you can say they are just bigger in size and faster in processing speeds. Just this is the simple definition. And uh, the computers, that they are very important. The third category is about the mainframe computers. Why we call mainframe computers, you will understand later on. Mainframe computers is used for large and powerful computer systems. They have got a high capacity of main memory and can process huge databases at extremely fast speed. It means these computers, mainframe computers, Exactly, they are very big, also in size. They have capacity of high capacity of main memory. It means they have many memories, like RAMs or hard disks. So, also can process huge databases at extremely fast speed. It means when we install a database, it will slow down our computer. Why? Because it reserves the processor. When you open Zoom, when you open Google, when you open PowerPoint, yes, they receive our uh, memory or our registers. So, but these computers are mainframes. It means more than one user, more than one user can connect to the mainframes, use the hard disks, use the RAMs, use the processors because it has many. But uh, in here, maybe also we find different main frame computers. This is the image that I have downloaded for you. And these are other images for the main frames. 
you can see these are the mainframe computers. It means that if we have one mainframe computer in our organ, for a small organization, uh, we can have mainframe for a small organization, not big, in, big organizations. Because for big organization, we use different computers. So for example, we can connect 100 or uh, a little bit, for example, thousands, thousands of users at the same time. But uh, if we are talking more, for example, uh, the Zoom clouds provide a Zoom meeting and millions of the people, millions of the people use the Zoom meeting all around the world because everybody is staying at home and they are studying uh, by the Zoom meetings. So they are using what? They are using supercomputers. These are very powerful machines fitted with multiple processors. For what? For performing complex scientific calculations. It means for scientific calculations or complex calculations, we use what? We use the supercomputers. They are known as number crunching machines as they can execute billions of instructions. You can see billions of instructions per second. It means IBM Roadrunner is an example of for what? For supercomputer. Well, I will paste it in here. IBM Roadrunner Computer Maybe Pong. These are the old versions, and right now you can see how many computers they are. Exactly, they are super computers because they can support billions of instructions, billions of instructions at the same time. So these are some emits for the supercomputers, but when I write supercomputers, this it's the I an example of IBM route runner. But if I write supercomputers in here for supercomputers, you can see like Facebook can use these supercomputers, like in Instagram, Zoom use these supercomputers because billions of the people are connecting and sending and, re and receiving messages. As I have used this uh, image, uh, you can see this image Well, I will show Beget because you can understand these are uh, lines and these lines are connected each with each other. You can see these are the lines and these are the switch or they are the computers that they are all all green it mean they are established and we we need uh, big and this is the example IBM I mean the IBM is the company that uh, from last years ago they have tried to create chips they are tried to create the hardware so they are very powerful computers and they can support billions of the users all around the world and these companies have such a cooler system that uh, because 24, I can say, hours a day, they are working with not stopping. Okay, this is the last example. So let's uh, find another image for supercomputers. Maybe we could find another example that uh, it be from top. Well, you can see all these are the examples for supercomputers. You need you can see these persons, they are adjusting the cables, they are using the cables, they are trying to connect the computers, the servers. Also, let's open big it. This is the image, for example, R23, R22. These are the names for each section, age, uh, and it's the picture of the back of the, these supercomputers. People are trying to connect each and every supercomputer with uh, the help of a cable. And when these cables are connected, they need lots of cables, they are arranging, they need uh, an engineer 
that how to connect these computers, how to join the lines, combine the lines, how to arrange it, these lines. So there are many people. I mean, it's not the work of just one uh, person that controls these, or we can say use a population in here. So I hope that you can understand today's lesson. Uh, I will stop the recording and uh, don't forget to subscribe the channel. Share the video for your classmates, maybe for you are also your families that can use from these video lessons, learn something from these lessons. And uh, hope you don't become bored with me. Thanks again for your watching.